Okay, so what can you tell me about your time here uh, at ESU? Okay, uh, I guess first you want to know my name. My name is Michael Grundy, and I was in I was in Emporia from September 1971 until I graduated in May 1975, and I stayed for a year in graduate school. So I finally left in '76. Uh, so I came here as a 17-year-old, left as a 22-year-old, and uh, this is where I grew. Uh, and what was best about Emporia probably was uh, I got a chance to fulfill my desire for learning. I, I like to learn. I like to read a lot. And we had a cool library, and we had cool people, and uh, it was a good place for me to learn. It was also good for me to find the frat. Uh, I remember Kappa Alpha Psi, and uh, that got me a lot of friends. and. Uh, Gave me a chance to live in the dorm and uh, frat house and live off campus and have all those different experiences. What are some of your favorite memories uh, living in the frat house? Uh, probably the favorite ones would be, mm, of course, the parties, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to share rooms uh, so you didn't get your own room. So there was always people around and it was always crowded, and the folks who didn't live there always came through just to socialize there, so you had to get real good at leaving the house to go study, go to the library, and those kind of places. Uh, but what I remember most that it was crowded and loud, and uh, I had a roommate who oftentimes would have overnight guests, which meant that I would have to sleep somewhere else, so Frat House wasn't the best place to live, but it was cold. <laughs> So you mentioned that you uh, were an author. Uh, what kind of books have you written? Uh, I've written three books, and I write books because I do motivational speaking, and motivational speaking, they always tell you that it's good to have a good book to go along with it. So uh, my first book was called Lessons I Learned About Life. It's just uh, a lot of motivational uh, uh, messages, things that I wrote for my nieces and nephews. I, they don't listen to me now, so I figured when I'm dead and gone, they'll have a book that they can go to and refer to. So that was why I wrote that one. Uh, the second one was a book of quotes uh, called Messages, and that was because people told me that the first one was too long for them to read, so I figured, well, I'd give them something shorter that they could read, so they could just sit in the bathroom and read it and uh, do it in short spurts. Uh, the third one was a book called uh, uh, Messages from Michael, and uh, it's a group of a bunch of essays uh, just about life, personal stories. Uh, I like telling stories, and especially personal stories. And that's what the books are about. Okay. And uh, the next one will probably be something about lessons that I've learned since I've retired. Sounds really interesting. How did you fall into writing? Uh, came as a part of, uh, like I said, big speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, because I was doing uh, motivational and public speaking, a lot of what I would hear from people is, do you have a book? Do you have a book? Why don't you write that down? So that, that's how I ended up doing it. And what you end up learning is any and everybody can write. It just takes a lot of discipline just to do it every day and every day to come back and do it. So if you've got the discipline, then I think uh, you can be an author. And then if you also don't worry about anybody reading every word that you wrote or getting everything perfect. Uh, sometimes the hardest part is just knowing when to just stop and save the rest for another book. Okay, any other uh, memories or things about uh, ESU campus or even outside to the whole Emporia community that you'd like oh, to talk about? See. Well, when I was in Emporia, I was a wrestler. And uh, I came here, matter of fact, on an academic scholarship as well as a wrestling scholarship. And uh, I wrestled here for a couple of years. And then they came up with a thing called Title IX. I don't know if you've heard of Title IX, but Title IX is where women, uh, we spend the same amount of money on women's sports like we do men's sports. And with that, we got rid of the wrestling program and we got instead a women's volleyball and women's basketball team. But uh, if you're going to make it equal, then somebody sometimes has to sacrifice. and. Uh, that was my sacrifice. And I had offers to go to other schools, but by then I was too ingrained in, in Emporia and I wasn't going anywhere. But uh, it was cool. I've had a good time in Emporia. It was a good, good time for me. Yeah. That's a shame about the wrestling program. It sounded uh, really interesting. It's, not, it's, uh, it's only a shame if you uh, don't think it's good for women to be in sports. And I think it's good for women to be in sports. And uh, yeah. if you think about it, my college wrestling career was just going to go that far, just as far as college. Yeah. I wasn't going to be one of those WWE guys jumping <laughs> off the top rope and doing that kind of stuff. So uh, that, that's okay. And uh, from what I remember, we ended up having some really good uh, women basketball teams and women volleyball teams as a result of that, too. So uh, it was okay. Okay. All right. Good enough.